In this episode of Real Chemistry, we're going to talk about the periodic table. You've probably seen this chart in the chemistry classroom or in your chemistry textbook. And basically, it's just a list, a catalog of all the elements that make up our world. So everything around you is made of elements. And we can catalog these elements on the periodic table. What we're going to do today is we're going to take a closer look at what all the different numbers and symbols on the periodic table mean. So we're going to take a look at the element rhenium, which we're particularly fond of here at Real Chemistry. It's element number 75, and you can see that 75 at the top of the box. In the middle of the box, you'll notice it says RE. This is just the atomic symbol. It's basically the abbreviation we use for that chemical. And it's particularly useful when we start to write chemical structures and other things like this to just have a shorthand for an element. But whenever we write RE, what we mean is rhenium. Now, some periodic tables contain the name spelled out in full, as you can see here. So sometimes you'll see the full element name listed. Sometimes you won't. Depends on the periodic table. Those are pretty self-explanatory. RE is the atomic symbol. It's like the abbreviation for the element. And then you have the name of the element listed at the top. This next guy is called the atomic number. And the atomic number tells you how many protons are in that element. It's also the way the periodic table is organized. So if you look at this, this group of elements on the periodic table, you'll notice that they're organized from left to right, counting up by atomic number. So you see boron over here is five, and then we have six for carbon, seven for nitrogen, eight for oxygen, nine for fluorine, and so forth. So the periodic table is organized by how many protons each element has, or what its atomic number is. Those mean the same thing. And... An important thing to note here is that the atomic number, which is the number of protons, actually defines what an element is. What do I mean by that? If you have an element that has 75 protons, it's always rhenium. Always rhenium. So that's what I mean by defines the element. The number of protons directly tells you what an element is. If I change the number of protons from 75 to 76, that's a new and different element. So the number of protons defines the element. That's what it is to be an element, say, rhenium, is to have 75 protons. Now, the other subatomic particles, which we haven't really talked about, are neutrons and electrons. You can change those, and it doesn't change the element. But the second you change the number of protons, you change what the element is. Let's take a closer look at what those protons are. So, when, when rhenium has the 75 below it, that means 75 protons, it's saying that down in the nucleus, that's the center of the atom, which you can see on this picture here, this is the nucleus, in the nucleus, there's 75 protons for rhenium. And then there's some number of neutrons and usually 75 electrons. We're not going to worry about the details there for now. The important part to remember is that every single thing on the periodic table specifies a number of protons that are in the center of that atom. So hydrogen has the atomic number one. That means it has one proton in the center of its nucleus. Rhenium is the atomic number 75, which means it has 75 protons in its nucleus. Another important element, uh, another important aspect, perhaps is a better way to put that, that you see on the periodic table is this molar mass. So at the bottom of every single square that has an element on it, you'll see a number. And what that is, is the molar mass. You can think of it kind of like the weight of an element if there's a ton of elements nearby. How many? Well, a mole. A mole is a number, just like a dozen or one or two or three, but a mole happens to be a really large number. In scientific notation, it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And so that 186 down there that we call the molar mass, that's how many grams a mole of rhenium weighs. Let me say that again. That's the mass in grams for 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd rhenium atoms. Let's take a closer look at that, because that's kind of a tricky concept. So here you see a bunch of different elements out on uh, white plates. And there's a common factor in all of these pictures. It turns out each one of those pictures contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of each of those different types. And so you'll notice, if you look at, say, the second plate there, carbon, that's 12 grams of carbon. 12 grams of carbon turns out to be exactly the number listed below carbon here in our little segment of the periodic table. And the fact that those match tell us that on that white plate, there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon there. You might also take a look at, say, sulfur. Sulfur 
has an atomic mass or a molar mass, those are interchangeable, of 32.1 grams. And you can see if you go look at this little segment of the periodic table, that right below sulfur, 32 is written. And so what that means is that if you get together a giant heaping pile of sulfur atoms, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of them to be exact, it will weigh 32 grams. So even though there's different weights of elements there, each one of those piles weighs something different, the thing they have in common is that all of them, all of them have exactly one mole of atoms on that plate. And if you write out the mole, it's 602 and then a bunch of zeros, and that's exactly how many atoms are in that pile. So don't think of this as just some weird number or some weird thing on a chart. Try to picture in your mind, if you can, the fact that there's a giant heaping pile of these atoms in each one of those pictures, and that the number of those atoms is the same for each pile. Now, some of those atoms are bigger than the other ones, and that's why the weights vary. So, there's actually a giant pile of atoms in each one of those pictures. And the number of those atoms is a mole. We'll talk more about the mole in other episodes of Real Chemistry. So let's review. At the very top of our rectangle, or our square, we see the atomic number, which is the number of protons. And that's what defines an element. If you change the number of protons, you change what an element is. Now, below that, you see the atomic symbol. The atomic symbol is just like the chemical abbreviation. And it's important to be able to match up the chemical abbreviation with its number of protons. And the periodic table lets you do that. At the very bottom, we have the molar mass. That is the mass of a mole of those atoms. That is um, the mass of a very large number of those atoms. So the periodic table provides a catalog of information. And the most important things it provides is the atomic number, which is the number of protons, the chemical symbol, and the molar mass, a measure of how heavy those atoms are. Thanks for watching Real Chemistry. Please comment below if you have any questions about the periodic table. You can also subscribe to my channel to receive updates, or please visit my channel to see the videos I have there.